You're watching Tag TV. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chonzong. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 4th of August. India's foreign minister meets ASEAN counterparts in Cambodia. Taliban say investigating US claim of killing Al-Qaeda leader Zawahiri. And Nepal to hold federal and provincial elections on November 20 as economy stumbles. And now for all the details. India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar on Thursday took part in ASEAN India Foreign Ministers meeting held in Cambodia on the sidelines of the ongoing summit of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. Jashankar said he was looking to set out paths for the ASEAN India partnership in the coming decade. After the meeting, he informed they held strong convergence on Indo-Pacific, UN Convention on the Law of the Sea, Connectivity, Terrorism, Ukraine and Myanmar. He said digital health and green growth will drive their partnership. The Indian Foreign Minister also held separate bilateral meetings with his counterparts including from Vietnam and Sri Lanka. Earlier in the day, Jay Shankar also met US Secretary of State Antony Blinken and discussed issues including Russia-Ukraine war and the Sri Lankan crisis. Indian government held a meeting with top health experts on the need for revisiting existing guidelines on monkeypox management, while Premier Health Institute Ames in New Delhi has started testing samples amid rising number of cases. India has so far reported nine cases of monkeypox, including one death. India's centre government on Thursday held a meeting with top health experts on the need for revisiting existing guidelines on management of monkeypox. While the Premier Health Institute aims in capital New Delhi has started testing samples amid rising number of cases of the disease in the country, India's monkeypox cases tally rose to at least nine on Wednesday after a 31-year-old Nigerian woman was tested positive in capital New Delhi, where there are total four cases now. Earlier this week, India also reported one death due to the disease in southern Kerala state, where the first case was detected on July 14. According to existing guidelines on management of monkeypox issued by the centre, any person having a history of travel to affected countries within the last 21 days, presenting with an unexplained acute rash and symptoms like swollen lymph nodes, fever, headaches, body aches and profound weakness is to be considered to be a suspected case. A case is considered laboratory confirmed for monkeypox virus by detection of unique sequences of viral DNA. We have received 12 samples from different states. Uh, we have received samples from Delhi, Haryana, Himachal, uh, Bihar and uh, the neighbouring areas of UP. Uh, out of these 12, two have tested positive and they are both from Delhi. Meanwhile, India is also seeing a sharp rise in COVID-19 cases with 19,893 new infections in the last 24 hours, taking the active case load to 136,478. The active cases comprise 0.31% of the total infections, while the national COVID-19 recovery rate was recorded at 98.49%, the health ministry said. In news from Afghanistan, the Taliban are investigating a U.S. claim that Al-Qaeda leader Ayman al-Zawahiri was killed in a U.S. drone strike in Kabul. A Taliban official said on Thursday, indicating the group's leadership were not aware of his presence there. Taliban official Sohil Shaheen said on Thursday that Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan is investigating a U.S. claim that Al-Qaeda leader Ayman al-Zawahiri was killed in a U.S. drone strike in Kabul, indicating the group's leadership were not aware of his presence there. Suhail Shaheen, the designated Taliban representative to the United Nations, who is based in Doha, told journalists in a message that government and the leadership wasn't aware of what is being claimed, nor any trace there. 
Investigation is underway now to find out about the veracity of the claim, he said, adding that the results of the investigation would be shared publicly. The United States killed Zawahiri with a missile fired from a drone while he stood on a balcony at his Kabul hideout on Sunday, U.S. officials said, in the biggest blow to the militants since Osama bin Laden was shot dead more than a decade ago. Taliban leaders have remained largely tight-lipped about the Sunday drone strike and have not confirmed the presence or death of Zawahiri in Kabul. Reports suggest that top Taliban leaders have been holding lengthy discussions about how to respond to the U.S. drone strike. How the Taliban react could have significant repercussions as the group seeks international legitimacy and access to billions of dollars in frozen funds following their defeat of a U.S.-backed government a year ago. Zawahiri, an Egyptian doctor, was closely involved in the 9-11 attacks on the United States and was one of the world's most wanted men. His death in Kabul raises questions whether he received sanctuary from the Taliban, who had assured the United States as part of a 2020 agreement on the withdrawal of U.S.-led forces that they would not harbor other militant groups. Shaheen said that Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan was committed to the agreement signed in the Qatari capital Doha. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said that the Taliban had grossly violated the agreement by hosting and sheltering Zawahiri. Thousands of applicants boycotted the recent test for 32 posts in the health department in Gilgit, Baltistan, alleging mismanagement and irregularities in the examination. The candidates tore the question papers in protest and accused authorities had already leaked the test and allowed chosen candidates to use mobile phones to cheat. Hundreds of candidates recently boycotted a test for 32 posts in the Gilgit Baltistan Health Department and protested outside the Chief Minister's house against mismanagement and irregularities in conducting of the examination. Soon after the test began, the candidates came out of the examination halls and tore the question papers in protest, alleging that the question paper had already been leaked and there was no check on candidates carrying smartphones during the exam. They alleged that the management had no interest in conducting a fair test because the positions had already been finalized for favorite candidates, most of whom did not belong to their region. और मोबाइल का खुलम खुला इस्तेमाल किया गया है वो भी चाहिए बंदूक ने इस्तेमाल किया गया है और ये खास पेपर भी उन लोगों के लिए ही बनाया गया था जिनको मोबाइल के साथ अंदर टेस्ट सेंटर में अलाउ किया गया है सिक्योरिटी वहाँ पर मौजूद थी the protest prompted Gilgit Baltistan Chief Minister Khalid Khushid Khan to order that the test be postponed. Marred with unemployment and poverty, government jobs are a dream for youths in the illegally occupied territory as prevalence of corruption and nepotism in the system as well as political intervention has kept them devoid of their rights for years. A news from Pakistan. Southern Pakistan has been hit hard by floods after unusually heavy monsoon rains this year. Scores of people have been killed and hundreds of homes have been swept away. Farmers in the tiny village of Sindh province are devastated as thousands of acres of agricultural land have been destroyed in the floods. Farmer Sajid Ali from Masu Barbari, a tiny village in Pakistan, Sindh province, waits glumly through his flooded cotton field after days of torrential monsoon rains let up, serving the irreversible damage. Southern Pakistan has been hit hard by floods after unusually heavy monsoon rains this year. Scores of people have been killed and hundreds of homes have been swept away. Around 50 villages in Sindh were inundated, reported local media, after flash floods from the neighbouring Balochistan province flowed over, destroying thousands of acres of agricultural land and orchards. Ali's village was one of those hit hard. The region has been suffering from drought for decades and the monsoon rains were always welcome. But this year it was too much of a good thing and now farmers like Ali are at a loss as to what to do. Rana Shakil Emmet, a village elder, described the loss as substantial and said no help from authorities had been forthcoming. But Allah 
Rescue authorities have said help had been delayed because large amounts of infrastructure had been destroyed by continuous and heavy rainfall, with the road linking Sindh and Baluchistan completely cut off. In news from Bangladesh, the International Monetary Fund has confirmed it would work with Bangladesh after the country requested for a loan program, the third South Asian country to seek financial assistance after Pakistan and Sri Lanka. The IMF said external conditions for Bangladesh have deteriorated sharply due to economic spillovers from the war in Ukraine. The International Monetary Fund has said it would work with Bangladesh to design a loan program request in coming months that meets the country's economic and social dynamics and has safeguards in the event of a further deterioration in economic conditions. In a revised statement of support for Bangladesh's request for a loan from the new IMF Resilience and Sustainability Trust RST, an IMF spokesperson reportedly said that work on an RST loan will proceed as the new trust is being made operational and it will work with Dhaka to design an IMF-supported reform program that would be required for the loan. The country's Daily Star newspaper reported last week that the Bangladesh Finance Ministry was seeking $4.5 billion from the IMF, a figure that the fund has declined to confirm. The IMF said external conditions for Bangladesh have deteriorated sharply due to economic spillovers from the war in Ukraine. Bangladesh's foreign exchange reserves fell to $39.67 billion as of July 20, sufficient for just over five months' worth of imports from $45.5 billion a year earlier. The country's economic mainstay is its export-oriented garments industry, which is bracing for a slowdown as key customers like Walmart are saddled with backlog as inflation forces people to prioritize essentials. Moving on, Nepal's government led by Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Dioba on Thursday announced it will hold a parliamentary election on November 20 amid concerns over high inflation and depleted foreign exchange reserves that have led to rising food and energy prices. Both the polls for the House of Representatives and the Provincial Assembly elections will be held on November 20 in a single phase as proposed by the Election Commission. An alliance of communists, including former Maoist rebels and the centrist Nepali Congress Party of Prime Minister Dioba, has held power since July last year. Former Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli's communist UML party, considered closer to Beijing, is the main opposition. The iconic Dal Lake in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir territory attracts many tourists on a large scale every year. Tourists this week were seen enjoying thrilling and adventurous jet ski ride in famed lake that was recently introduced by authorities to attract foreign as well as domestic tourists to the valley. Every year, thousands of tourists visit India's northern Jammu and Kashmir territory to witness the serene beauty of the picturesque Dal Lake and enjoy Shikara ride, the famous Kashmiri boat ride. This year, the government is promoting lake activities to attract more tourists and entertain them to the fullest. The introduction of water sport activities like jet ski riding in Dal Lake resulted in a huge tourist attraction. Tourists, both young and old, were seen enjoying jet ski rides this week. During the adventure activity, trainers provide full assistance along with life-saving jackets to tourists so that they can enjoy the ride and feel safe. This year, there is a lot of tourists here. There is approximately 3-4 minutes ride, there is a distance of 1.5 km and there are 600 charges. The tourism industry in Jammu and Kashmir, whose stunning Himalayan mountain and lake scenery once made it a magnet for visitors, was hit hard for two years due to the coronavirus-induced lockdown. And attempts are now being made to revive the industry, which is the mainstay of the region's economy. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Goodbye.
You're watching Tag TV. Number one multicultural channel. This is Tag TV. Tag TV tags you news, views, and entertainment.